Hi everyone, today I'm going to be uh, testing uh, a PoE injector. First I'm going to unbox it for you guys just to see what, uh, what I got. So this comes in a pretty generic box, it just says networking products. So I think they use the same box to ship all kinds of uh, items. But right here you can actually see the, uh, the model number I have here which is uh, a BB Tech PCE-100GH. 30 watt. So this is a what's considered a PoE plus PoE injector. So I need this to do some testing on a access point which I'll show in a bit. So I'm going to be testing this on a PoE phones, a PoE switch uh, and a PoE access points. So I'm going to see if, if it has any problems working with any of these products. So first I'm just going to go ahead and unbox this for you guys. So let's start. So comes with a little pamphlet here. Let's take a look. Hopefully this is in English, but I can't really see anything with my eyesight. But hopefully when I'm looking at this on the monitor, I, it's actually in English. All right, so hopefully some important information here. Yeah. All right. Uh, regular power cord, I'm gonna need this, so I'm gonna Go. So, standard uh, power cable. Okay, let's leave that aside for now. And the uh, PO injector. Let's take it out of the uh, wrapper here. out of the way there's nothing else in it and all right so it says there a PoE injector gigabit So I'm buying this instead of the uh, Cisco PoE injector because I'm, I'm only going to use it for testing and um, for home use. I'm not going to use it at a client site, so uh, I don't think I, I need to spend twice as much the amount of money to to do some testing. And uh, well, first of all, this I don't think it's the same level of quality. First of all, this feels quite a bit lighter than the uh, Cisco PoE injector that. I normally use for access points, but uh, who knows? Um, so I'm just gonna hook it up now, and uh, well, let's see what do we do. No, we didn't check the bottom. Let's check the bottom first. All right, what does it say there? Yeah. So it can do. It says 30 watts. So that's what I specifically looked for. Speed 10 slash 100 gigabit and made in China, so we know it doesn't cost a lot. All right. Okay, I'm also going to be using this uh, old uh, wireless router here just to give uh, network connectivity to the devices. I'm not even sure if it actually configured it to access the uh, the internet. I usually configure these as a uh, a wireless access point but uh, we don't even need that functionality anyway. Okay, so which one is the input here and which one is the output? Uh, okay, I think this one says out. Hopefully I can read everything on a bigger monitor afterwards. And let's do the, if I plugged it in, it just won't work. I'm not going to blow up anything. At least I hope. All right, 
right, so I'm gonna just plug it in here now. And there we go, there's a little green light. And hopefully that means uh, it's working. Let's see, do we got, no, it doesn't show anything because I haven't really plugged in any devices yet. So let's get this aside here. And let's grab, uh, let's grab the access point first. So this is the uh, access point uh, I want to test for. It's a Cisco, let's see what model is this. So this is a Cisco WAP371. So it supports uh, AC, which is good. It, it, that means I can use the uh, 2.4 and uh, five gigahertz uh, frequencies and antennas at both at the same time. If I use uh, a 30 watt PoE injector. If I don't, it only powers one of the uh, antennas. So that's the reason for requiring a, a 30 watt PoE injector. Okay, let's uh, turn this around. Okay. So we can see here it can also be powered by um, DC power, but I'm just going to put it in the uh, Ethernet port and flip it around, and we can see that it it lights up pretty quick. There's no pause or anything, so that means it is being powered on by the uh, PoE injector. And if we look at uh, our little router here. To actually see that the port one is lighting up. And the little antenna light is flashing. And it's flashing green. Which means the uh, access point has fully booted up and is operating, but I don't think I configured the um, the IP address correctly. I think I have a static IP configured for this, uh, which doesn't match the uh, router's config right there. So, and uh, I don't think it can go out to the internet if it's trying to do anything like that. So, all right, at least we know that uh, that that works. So let's put this aside. And uh, the next item. is this uh, Nortel phone. Now, I don't think this is a PoE powered phone, uh, but I just wanted to test it and see, uh, it could be, I have no idea. I didn't bother when I purchased it to make sure it was a PoE uh, phone, but a lot of VoIP phones are PoE. So let's, let's give this a try. And this is the only place where it could be plugged. So it's only one. And uh, nothing. So if a device is not PoE powered, it doesn't do the auto sensing that it'll provide power. So I'm not hurting this phone by uh, any way by plugging it in like this. So it just doesn't receive power this way. All right. So that's done. Put this aside. Now I do have a couple of other phones that I know for sure are PoE powered, so I'm gonna bring these over. Okay. All right, so this is another Nortel phone. Um, Avaya bought the rights to a lot of Nortel technology and this is one of them. Uh, let me see if I can pull back here. Get the phone. All right. No, this is the best I can do for the moment. But um, yeah, let's try uh, just plugging this in now. And 
hopefully you can see the screen. Okay, so let's bring this. So hopefully you can see something. Well, there's a, a blue light and a red light. Okay, maybe we'll get something more. There we go. Something on the screen. Nortel. Uh, something cool about these phones, you can flash them with the, the SIP firmware and actually use them uh, with Asterix. I'm not, how, not sure how reliable these work with Asterix, but I did do some testing and I managed to get one of these to work. Um, yeah, I didn't, I didn't do any serious testing though, so I wouldn't go out buying one of these in case you're interested. Anyway, I don't think it'll fully configure. Uh, again, this is not one of those that's been configured, so we'll just stop at this. Okay. I'm going to do one more phone. This is a Cisco phone. This is a, the SPA504G. This is probably the uh, most popular uh, Cisco phone that uh, Cisco puts out in terms of um, numbers. Uh, if you're not sure about which phone, which SIP phone to buy, this is probably your best bet. This, this is pretty much guaranteed to work with most uh, VoIP uh, phone companies out there. So from the smallest to the, the biggest, they, they've all tested their service against this phone. So if you're not sure about what phone to use for a particular VoIP service, these are good phones. The, the only thing I really don't like about these phones is uh, the speaker phone. Although it's uh, been improved over the, over the years with the um, from the original Linksys versions, which Cisco acquired and these phones are based on, it's still, to me, not a great speaker phone. So, but let's let's test this out. So, right here, and you can see the little lights. And let's see if we get anything else. Normally all these lights uh, light up green here if you have it configured. And it looks like it's doing its thing. And I don't think anything's going to happen. It's been taking a, a while, so yeah. Okay, let's just uh, leave it at that. Uh, oh, it's actually getting IP, so I, I don't have it configured to access the internet so that's that's probably the reason why nothing's lighting up but it's, at least it's getting an IP address and let it letting us see uh, up to this point okay so we're done with this one and oh, there almost went my cheap PoE injector down the floor but I caught it in time all right okay so the next thing I have is, is this 8 port gigabit uh, switch now, uh, I'm not going to test uh, this giving power to other devices. I'm going to test this as an input source um, for the PoE injector. So the first port uh, you can use to power up the device. So if you want to put this switch, let's get a better look here, up in a ceiling somewhere or somewhere where you don't have uh, traditional power outlets, 
and you can pull a Cat5 or Cat6 cable. You can power this device. Now, there's all kinds of uses for this, but I think one of the uh, most popular is to um, power um, some networking gear or uh, security cameras, but uh, this only has the PoE input. It doesn't output anything, but you can get switches that provide both input and output. So I'm just gonna test the, uh, to see if it powers on. So here's how it looks. Uh, and I have nothing else attached to this. And let's just plug in in the first port here. And I'm gonna flip it over. See, it says POE in. I'm not sure if you can read that. There we go. So let's plug it in and flip it over. And there we go. So it can be powered on by a PoE injector. So no, no, no AC adapter plugged in. Just the uh, PoE cable. All right. So that works. Now this this can take a, a minute or so to actually boot up. Um, but this light seems to always be flashing whether there's activity or not, so who knows. Okay, we're done with this. And the last. So I got these uh, really big, ugly uh, Cisco access points. Now this is when uh, Cisco got into using uh, Linux uh, into embedding their hardware and putting out uh, things and uh, they have uh, quite a few products that use this ugly big casing it's not exactly the most attractive or the best thing to mount uh, but it is PoE so let's let's test that so again let me plug it in let's see if the uh, lights up and there we go it does so so far this uh, cheap uh, PoE injector actually works um, and everything's lighting up properly. Okay, so let's just uh, end it here. So again, a final look. So what I forgot to mention before, you can mount this on a wall. There's uh, you can put mount screws. Did it actually come with any? No, it didn't. Uh, so you have to use your own screws. It didn't really come with one. And again, and here's the uh, the specs here. And all right, that's it.